Hello and welcome back to my series of videos where we create the free code Gantt Pomodoro clock. In this video, we'll implement the reset button and use the audio HTML tag to play a beep when a session or break is finished. Our goal here is to learn how to use the audio HTML tag and how to use the use ref react hook to access and manipulate DOM elements. More specifically, we'll be using use ref to access the audio in the audio HTML tag and play the audio once a session or break is finished. I'd love your support. I'd love to hear from you. Click subscribe, click that like button, comment below. Let me know why you hate this video. Let me know why you love this video. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on dev.2, follow me on Instagram. I can't wait to hear from all of you. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's start our development server from our Pomodoro clock directory. Let's use npm start or yarn start, whatever it is you're using. That should load up a browser with your app running in it. Here's where we left off. We have our plus sign, our minus sign for both the break and the session, and you'll see clicking start actually starts our session. Our session is going a little bit faster now. We did that on purpose for development purposes. Now let's go into some code. The first thing we want to do is open up our app.js. And in here, we want to define exactly what our reset button should do. So let's create a new function. This function will be called handle reset button click. And what we want to do is clear the timeout interval and that will stop the timer from running. We want to set the interval ID over to null, and that'll let us know that no timer is running. We want to set the session type to session. We want to reset the session length to 25 minutes. We want to reset the break length to five minutes. And we want to reset the timer to 25 minutes, which is the uh, number the session length, okay, the initial session length. Now what you'll notice here with the timeout interval is that app.js actually does not have access to that timeout interval. That is actually in our time left. So what we'll need to do is extract that or bring that state up into app.js. While we're at it, we should also bring up the current session type and the set current session type. Let's take those out, bring those into app.js. Let's copy and paste those right up here. And with that, you'll see that handle start stop click is pretty much broken in time left. To fix this, we can also lift up the handle start stop click function and the is started boolean up into app.js. So that'll go right there. And you'll notice here in app.js that we also need the time left setter. So as usual, go into time left and lift this state up as well. And while we're at it, let's bring over this use effect. Let's copy and paste this into app.js. Import use effect from React. And you'll see there are no red lines here. However, time left is still left without the time left variable, the current session type, the handle start stop click, and is started. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to use time left and app.js side by side. That way I can properly edit both components at once. So the current session type variable, I'm actually going to rename to timer label, pass that in as a prop to the time left component, replace that here, and down in my app.js, I'll pass in a timer label. That is actually the current session type. As for handle start stop click over here in time left, that'll also be a prop, and I'll pass that in directly from app.js. We have the start stop button label. So I'll actually rename that to start stop button label. 
and put in the label logic down here in my app.js. Lastly, I also need the time left. So let's import that in props and in our app.js, pass the time left over to the time left component. Now you see break length and session length are now unused since we're passing the handle start stop click function directly into time left. So let's delete those and let's make sure we didn't break anything in this refactor. This refactor was pretty big. Let's go back into our app. You'll see here that session is working. We can start, we can stop and break is working as well. Nice, our refactor didn't break anything. Now you'll see here in the console, we have two errors, use state and use effect are both unused in the time left component. We'll delete those, save, and full screen our app.js. Now let's go into what we came here for, the handle reset button click. So now we can clear the timeout interval using clear interval and the interval ID. Additionally, we can set our interval to null, right? So that'll set our, I'm sorry, set our interval ID to null. We can set the session type to session. We can reset the session length. So set session length to 25 minutes. Set the break length to five minutes and reset the timer to 25 minutes. Now we have our handle reset button click function all written out. The last thing we need to do is attach that to a button. So let's go down here, add a button whose ID is reset for free code camp test purposes. On click, we want to call our handle reset button click and we'll render out reset. Let's go into our application and see how we did. We'll press plus, click reset, and we're back to 25. Press plus here, reset it, we're back to five. Let's start our timer, press reset, and it resets back to 25 and stops. Our reset button looks to be working. The next thing we want to do is add audio into our application. We want a beep to play whenever the timer reaches zero, whenever a session becomes a break, or whenever a break becomes a session. To do that, we'll add a audio HTML element with an ID of beep for free code camp test purposes. Inside of this audio element, we'll have a, another HTML element called source. This source tag will have an SRC attribute, and this SRC attribute takes in a URL where the MB3 is located. I have an MB3 handy, handy from onlineclock.net that you can probably use as well. Type is audio forward slash MPEG. We're telling the source that it is an MP3 and let's close our source tag. Now we have an audio HTML element. I do want you to be aware that this audio HTML element does not render onto the page. There's nothing to see. But if you go into your Google Chrome console, you'll see that the audio HTML element is in the DOM tree. In our code, we need access to this audio HTML element. To do that, we'll put, we'll use use ref, a React hook. So let's scroll up to the top of our app.js file, which by the way, is getting way too big. Create a variable that'll hold the reference to our audio elements. We'll use the use ref React hook to tell React hey, this is going to be a reference to an HTML element or basically any mutable object. The variable name audio element will be used down here in the audio HTML tag. We'll use a JSX attribute called REF and in the curly braces, put in the variable name. Now to recap, we're creating a uh, reference up here at the top named audio element and the way that we tell React that this audio element variable will be a reference to this audio element here is by putting an REF attribute right there. Now we want to play this audio element up here where we handle the case where time left is zero. So if time left is greater than zero, return, 
Down here, time left is less than zero. Time left is is less than zero. We'll take the audio element. We'll take the current mutable object in that reference, which is the DOM object, and we'll call dot play. This will play it when it reaches zero. Additionally, down here in the handle reset button click, we also want to reset the audio. So audio audio element dot current dot load will reset the audio object. Let's go back into our application and make sure that our app is working as we want. We'll put session all the way down to one, start our app. See my Brave browser is actually blocking autoplay, which is a, that's a good thing. We'll again bring this down to one, start the session. And you can hear that the alarm is going off. It works just as we planned. To recap, we totally changed what our time left component looked like. We changed the number of state variables it needed to handle and moved a bunch of state up to app.js. Time left now only needs to handle handle, start, stop, click, start, stop, button label, time left, and timer labor, label. Those are the variables. So we can actually go into app.js here and delete break length and session length from our time left component and not worry about it breaking. Additionally, we added a audio element to app.js and this audio element is hooked up into a React reference. We can manipulate and access the DOM object using that reference. And we did so here to play the audio element. And we also did it here to reload the audio when we click reset. As you may have noticed, our app.js file is getting rather big. The bulk of this here is the handle start stop click handler and functions that manipulate the state variables of app.js. We'll fix this in a future video where I go into advanced state management in React. If you like this video, don't forget to click that like button and click that subscribe button. Leave me some comments below. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.